Last video that we did was on the rifle that I'm going to be using in 2024. This video is going to be about the pistol and the dot and holster that I'm using in 2024. So to start off, I am going to be using the T-Series holster from Blackhawk. The reason why I selected this particular holster is mainly because of the amount of protection that it offers the dot. So this, <clears throat> the dot that I'm using is not designed perfectly for this holster. However, you can kind of see that there's a point or a point here where once it has gone past that point, it kind of goes past the point of no return or there's a, a little bit of leverage that keeps the hood closed and it does go past that. So it does keep the hood tight to the top of the dot. And then when you draw, it does kick it away and then put it back in and then close it back. If this becomes annoying for me, which it might be a possibility, I don't know, I can kind of pinch this and take it off. However, this is the only piece that leaves. So the rest of the enclosure for the dot stays. The reason I like that is crawling on the ground, going up and over things, whatever they have us doing, burpees on concrete, whatever they have us doing, the holster is going to be taking the direct impact from the ground, not the dot. I don't want to be bouncing my dot off of stuff. So I would much, per much prefer that the holster is taking that abuse. This is a light bearing holster. So I have the Surefire X300 Ultra on it. That's what secures this into the scope or into the holster. And I do like the light. I may not keep the light. I may use another holster that doesn't require me to have the light, but right now this is what I'm gonna go with. The dot that I picked is the Aimpoint Acro P2 and it is an enclosed dot or an enclosed emitter dot. The, I don't necessarily love the way it looks and stuff, but the reason I've decided on this is I believe that it being an enclosed dot and that emitter being protected from dirt, rain, you name it, is worth it for the kind of shooting that we do. And the last thing I'd wanna do is get a bunch of water or dirt or whatever and packed on top of the emitter and an open emitter type dot and not be able to use it or have to, you know, fiddle around with it to get it to work and clear up the screen. So that's the reason why that I've gone, that's the reason why I've gone with this dot. Other ones that I tried was the Trigicon SRO, I think is what it is, or maybe it's a different brand. It's the SRO, big screen, goes forward a little bit. In this particular pistol, that part of the dot that goes a little bit forward on the SRO can block the brass from coming out and cause a little bit of a stovepipe. So I'm avoiding that dot on this pistol. I also tried and had a Leopold Delta Point Pro, but that is an exposed emitter dot. And basically I've decided that whatever I'm gonna use is gonna be enclosed. You do give up a little bit of, not a little bit, quite a bit of the window that you can see the dot in. However, finding the dot has never been an issue. I, you know, you just dry fire a bunch and the dot shows up in the screen. Uh, it's not so like rocket science. So whenever you put the dot on there, dry fire a couple of days and the dot appears in the window right where you expect it to be. And it becomes intuitive. You point the gun, you see the dot. <clears throat> The reason why I'm going with the XC is I do like full frame pistols and the longer dust cover. And as you can see in recoil, the comp stays forward. So you do have quite a bit of weight on the pistol that is staying static further up on the gun, which helps keep the muzzle end of the gun down when you're shooting. Speed isn't huge, a huge thing in the tactical games for some of the stages and some stages speed makes a giant difference so the amount of fitness that it takes to get a couple points ahead of the field versus the amount of effort it takes to shoot a little bit faster than the rest of the field uh, i'm getting old so i gotta learn how to shoot faster to get my points where i can i am going to stick with using the polymer grip in this pistol so there are uh, metal grips like aftermarket metal grips that are available with this however I don't feel like the trade-off for the weight is worth it. And then also the texturing in the metal grips and most of the metal grips 
can really tear up your forearm with everything we do, far, farmers carries, uh, all, all those other stuff, having your forearm drag across like basically a cheese grater all weekend is not fun. Um, so a lot of times the guys that are using that will put like sweat bands on their arms or something to protect their arms from their pistol grip. And that I am going to put more time in with the uh, Staccato P, which the P is kind of a Glock 17 size pistol. I have a couple of them and I do like them. However, I don't have one that is a duo that you can mount an optic to. So I am going to get one of those and shoot it quite a bit and see how I like it. I talked to Tony about the pistols and he said he'll probably be like likely be making a move over to the Staccato P for limited optics and USPSA because he can clear his holster a little faster with it. And the sight radius on your pistol now, as soon as you put a dot on your gun, the sight ra radius becomes obsolete. So the Sight radius is important when you're shooting iron sights. You can be a little bit more precise with it. The further away the front sight is from the back sight, the more precise you can aim and more accurate you can be. However, as soon as you put a dot on it, all that goes away. So it's really about how you like the feel of the pistol. So I'm gonna test that a little bit further. As far as like magwell and stuff, I think that the magwell that comes on it is pretty ideal. So it's not a huge magwell. It is not, you know, just a bare magwell, polymer magwell, and it provides like an adequate, more than adequate amount of space to insert magazines. One thing that I have done in the past is I'll put some paint up here in the front of the grip. So that way when you go to hit a reload, like it's not just a hole. You can see like where the red paint is and basically you aim for the red paint with your magazine and insert it there. Other than that, uh, it's basically just a bone stock XC with Aimpoint Acro P2 on it, and then a Surefire 300 Turbo X300 Ultra light on it. If you have any questions about the pistol, I'll update if we need to about the Staccato P, if that's the direction I end up going and kind of explain why I maybe have made that choice. But for right now, I'm going to stick with the XC and we'll see how I like it after the first couple competitions.